Hey everyone, welcome to episode three of Ask Windows Central, where we take your questions. This week we'll be talking about, of course, Windows 11, the new Microsoft Store, Android APKs, and Surface Neo. Stay tuned. All right, the first question is from Kip. He asks, will Windows 10 and 11 keep the same core or will it become more 10X-like while retaining legacy compatibility? Zach, I think this is a good question for you. Sure. So the answer right now is that it will keep the same core as Windows 10. Not the same platform release. I want to make that very clear. Windows 11 is certainly a newer version of the, the platform that Windows 10 is based upon. Uh, it's not sharing the same base. So you know how Windows 10 21H1 was based on the same platform release that Windows 10 20H2 was based on. Uh, Windows 11 is not based on that same platform release. It's based on a newer platform release, codenamed Cobalt. Um, but that's still sort of legacy Windows. Uh, what Kip is asking here is, will Windows 11 eventually move to the sort of modern core that was Windows Core OS, which is what Windows 10X was uh, built upon. And the answer I think is no. I mean, we don't know for sure, of course, Microsoft may decide to, uh, to, to change this in the future, but as of right now, the answer is no. Windows 11 is based on the same sort of legacy core Windows platform that we've known for decades at this point. So it will maintain all of that legacy compatibility and so on and so forth. Will it move to a more modern core in the future? Technically, I guess it's possible. I don't think Windows 11 will ever be 100% a Windows Core OS product, but it can certainly borrow bits and pieces here and there. I mean, what we've seen on Windows 11 so far is essentially the UX from 10X come to the legacy desktop. Uh, but in regards to under the hood sort of platform innovation, we've not seen too much yet. It could happen, uh, but we don't really know the answer right now. And as of launching later this year, it will not be based on the modern Windows Core OS. All right, moving on. The next question from Colito, I believe. How do you think Microsoft will promote that the new store is a place to find basically everything they need? Dan, I think this one's for you. Right, so this is a good question. And there's a lot of stuff we don't know yet about the new Microsoft store. And so, you know, what's going on here is you can basically put in any classic Win32 app now into the store. And we've seen a lot happen this week already with OBS streaming, Zoom, Adobe, and a few others, including WinZip. So it's clear developers are taking advantage of these new relaxed rules. And there's a lot going on here. These apps actually don't update themselves through the store. They just update themselves directly. So the store is almost acting like just a listicle for these apps as a place to go see them and review them, but you're actually getting the app through the developer. But we do expect a lot more of these apps to start appearing over the summer, just going by this first week. Now, the question is, how does Microsoft promote all this to let people know that the store actually has nice apps in it? And it's a tough one to answer. The first one, of course, is getting people to click that icon. And Microsoft's always had this policy with pinning the store to the taskbar and putting it in search and putting it to start, making it front and center for the user. But ultimately, they still need to click it, open it, and search. And so it's gonna rely on that ability for people to have curiosity to go into the store and start using it. I think it's gonna be a process, but as we highlight and promote more of these apps, people are gonna to start to see value, which I also mentioned the new Microsoft Edge extensions are also now in the store. So this will just be an evolving story over the next few months and actually the next few years. As more and more people begin to use the store, developers will start to take advantage, especially of the new app developer tools in Windows App SDK to make more modern apps. But for now, we'll start with these Win32 ones and we'll see where it goes and if people like it or not. Yeah, and I think in regards to what Microsoft can do to promote the store, that there's many things they could do. They could push out notifications when like a, a high level sort of app is finally available in the Microsoft store. Though that may be intrusive to some, the, the alternative to that is marketing, right? Uh, just when when marketing Windows 11, they can highlight the new things like the new UI, the new snapping stuff, but they can also highlight the fact that the store now has the apps you love. You know, um, th there's so many easy ways to sort of tell the world that the new store is actually a place to go to find your apps now because you're right I mean the reputation of the Microsoft store up until now has not been great so they need to improve that reputation somehow and I think the, the best way to do that is simply through marketing all right moving on to Leo 74 he asks is the Surface Neo dead for good since 10x is no more so the answer is probably not uh, Microsoft has wanted to do the Surface Neo for some time and we've seen Windows 11 uh, announced now and if you take a look at Windows 11 
it looks very similar to Windows 10X. Now there's no technical reason why Microsoft couldn't ship Windows 11 on the Surface Neo. The Surface Neo was a uh, an Intel powered device. The only real difference between them was that it was running on Windows Core OS rather than Windows uh, legacy Windows desktop. Um, but the Intel processor could absolutely run the legacy version of Windows if Microsoft wanted it to. And now that Microsoft has brought the 10X UX to Windows 11, what's stopping them, right? I mean, th there are some caveats here. The UI on Windows 11 isn't 100, it isn't a one-to-one -one copy of the 10X UX. You know, it's not a very, it's still desktop orientated. It does have an improved touch experience, but Microsoft could still do this. They could tweak the UI uh, uh, for dual screen devices so that it works better and shifts things like away from the center bezel. It's entirely possible. The OS is not what's stopping them from doing that. It's, I think, down to whether or not they actually want to ship the Surface Neo at this point. And I think they do. I think it would be a shame to not ship that device, especially since they didn't get a chance to, to test it in the world, right? No, they didn't really know if people want a dual screen device or not. So I, th I think we will see Windows 11 on the Surface Neo, possibly maybe later this year when Windows 11 officially launches, uh, launches if not probably sometime in 2022. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I see no reason why this shouldn't happen, at least to see if people use it. It is an experimental device. We don't know how useful it is. Yeah. I've said on the podcast previously that I personally believe dual screen devices are better to use than a single screen foldable, at least going by my experience on Lenovo's X1 Fold, which is amazing hardware, but even with Windows 11 on it, is okay i don't know it still has a ways to go maybe someday that form factor will be here but i think dual screen is definitely more interesting and i don't think microsoft's just going to put that hardware to the side and not use it they put all as you mentioned they put all that resources into developing it and it's basically ready to go the question of course is how much does windows 11 take advantage of dual screens that we don't know and for that we'll have to wait and see what microsoft has to say on it and not only that if they were to ship the surface neo now i think they would have to update the design a little bit um because you know when the surface neo and duo were announced they were announced as a pair they looked the same one was just bigger than the other but come this fall, the surface duo 2 is coming out and that will look slightly different well a bit different uh, compared to this one and indeed the bigger surface neo so they will likely have to update the neo's design to sort of match the surface duo I don't think they'll call it Surface Neo 2. I think they'll still call it the Surface Neo. Um, but yeah, they will. They do have to sort of think about how they're going to market this device alongside the Duo because they were supposed to be a pair, right? And if the Duo is moving on to a newer design with newer features, the Neo just sort of has to keep up, even if the first version didn't ship. All right, last question. Raphael asks, Android APKs are being sunset for the new AAB format, also known as Android App Bundle. What does this mean for Windows 11? All right, so the TLDR, nothing. I know a lot of people have sort of made hay over this. And to be clear, a, the AAB Android app bundle was announced, I believe in 2018. So it goes back a long time. In fact, there's a million apps already using it on the Google Play Store. And so it's not really new. In fact, this probably didn't need to even be in a press release. It could have been in developer notes. I spoke with Jerry Hildebrand from Android Central, our sister site about this, and he's in agreement too. He says nothing changes. What happens is as a developer, when you go to compile your app, you can still spit it out as an APK. You can still upload it to the Amazon store and Windows 11 if you need to do that. And then put onto Google Play as an AAB. This is actually a good system for Google in the sense that it strips down the app to its core components based on certain hardware. Basically makes smaller downloads and everything more efficient. But for APKs, it shouldn't change anything in the long run. Now, some of this may have to do with Google and control of this store. But I, like I said, I don't see this as impacting anything on Windows 11. And even the ABB stuff can be worked around if Microsoft needed to. So I don't see this as having any impact whatsoever. Remember, we can still sideload APKs on Windows 11, as well as get them to the Amazon store. We do expect maybe Samsung to get on board here as well, as Microsoft is open to more stores on Windows 11. I'd be shocked if Samsung doesn't start shipping its laptops with its own Galaxy store on board for its Android apps, because why not? So this story will be evolving. I still have questions about how you useful Android apps will be on Windows 11, but that's an open question. Let me know though what you guys think.
Yeah. And, and we should also clarify, APKs aren't being sunset like the question suggests. It's just that the AAB format is a, is a new format for Android apps that Google will be accepting into its Play Store and maybe perhaps um, forcing on developers. I think that's the plan is, is to make it so that if your app's in the Play Store, it has to be AAB format. But APKs aren't going away. Uh, if you're a developer, like Dan said, you can spit it out in both formats and you can upload the APK to the Amazon App Store or the Samsung Store or onto any sort of other storefront on Android that you'd like, or even sideload them onto Windows 11 when that's finally a thing you can do. All right, so that does it for this episode of Ask Windows Central. Now, if you have a question, you can reach us on Twitter, Daniel underscore Rubino and Zach at Zach Bowden. You can also drop us an email at Daniel at windowscentral.com and just put Ask Windows Central in the subject line so I can filter those out. You can also join us on our Discord channel. You can go to windowscentral.com forward slash Discord to get the link there to join there as we have a separate forum there for Ask Windows Central as well as ongoing discussions about Windows 11, Xbox, gaming, and sharing wallpapers and more. As always, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.